हेलो राइट ओके तो व्हाट इज दर्बाक्स क्राइटेरिया सपोज एफ इज रेमॉन इंटेग्रेबल ऑन ए काम बी राइट इफ वन ओनली there exists a partition p1 right belongs to p of a comma b and epsilon is greater than 0 for every epsilon greater than 0 such that the u of p1 comma f minus l of p1 comma f is less than i am taking epsilon by 2 so this is my interval this is a comma b what is my partition here p1 is equals to a is equals to x and r x1 and so on the last one is xn right so this is xi minus 1 this is x because f is a riemann integrable on the closed interval a comma b and again given hypothesis f is also riemann integral on b comma c so again f is riemann integrable on b comma c so by using darbox criteria there exists a partition p2 belongs to p of a comma b and again epsilon is greater than 0 such that the difference of u of p2 comma f minus l of p2 comma f is less than epsilon by 2 so we call it 1 and this is a right so any doubt up to this point hello hello are you here yes yeah, sir we we clear yeah, yes sir we have yeah. yeah okay good no my problem is if it is uh, silence i am unable to understanding whether it is internet is working or not okay right good <clears throat> next one so what i am going to take i am going to take what what is these are the hypothesis given so now what is my conclusion f is riemann integrable on a comma c right so this is a c and this is b in between under this one there is a p1 under this one there is a partition p2 so union of this p1 and p2 i call it p that is a partition of closed interval a comma b that is what is that one a is equals to x not and so on b that is equals to xn comma xn plus 1 and so on isn't it so you can say some xk that xk is equals to c so this is my full partition p which is the union of p1 and p2 so clearly p is a partition we know that union of two partitions is again a partition partition on a comma c right so now what we are going to prove f is a riemann integrable on c right 
remaining to prove f belongs to Raman integrable a comma c. So for this one, again, I am using the Darbox criteria. So let us say the difference u of p comma f minus l of p comma f. What is this one? This is nothing but summation i is equals to 1 to k because our partition is a points from x naught to k that xk is equals to c that is mi of p comma f minus small mi of p comma f times delta xi. Right? So, I am going to split this i is equals to 1 to k in two parts. Why? Because I have a p is a union of two partitions p1 and p2 and p1 is starting from x0 to uh, xn and uh, p2 is starting from xn to uh, what is this one? B, P2. P2 is starting from Xn to K. Right? So then, I can write this one is equals to summation. I is equals to 1 to N. Mi of P comma F minus small mi of P comma F. That is infimum of F over the partition P times delta Xi okay. plus summation I is equals to here is N. After N, it is a N plus 1 to K EMI of P comma F minus small MI of P comma F Sines delta xi. Right? So, what is this value? This is nothing but u of p1 comma f minus l of p1 comma f plus this one is u of p2 comma f minus l of P2 comma F. Right? So then, we know that this value is, the first one is less than epsilon by 2 from 1. And the second one is from 2, this is an epsilon by 2. That is the first case. So therefore, F is right, Raman integrable on closed interval A comma C. Right? So this is how to use the Darbox criterion for the Raman integrable T of two functions, so the same functions on the connecting interval. Right? Right. The next one. This is. So from here onwards, this is based on the mean value theorems. Right? Mean value theorems and uh, fundamental theorem. First fundamental theorem of calculus and second fundamental theorem of calculus, etc. Right. So first we need to try to uh, recall the, what is the integral mean value theorem. So come on, tell me, anyone? Remind me. What is the integral mean value theorem?
इंटीग्रल मीन वैल्यू जीरो राइट सो व्हाट टाइप ऑफ कंडीशंस आर रिक्वायर्ड वी नीड ए टू फंक्शंस वन शुड बी ए कंटिन्यूअस फंक्शन एंड अनदर वन इज ए इंटीग्रेबल एंड आल्सो व्हेन द फंक्शन इज इंटीग्रेबल दैट फंक्शन शुड बी ए नॉन नेगेटिव then we can see f belongs to continuous function on closed interval a comma b right and number 2 g belongs to riemann integral a comma b and this function should be a non negative function For all x belongs to a comma b. So these two conditions are required for the integral mean value theorem. So what? Immediately, we can find there exists an z belongs to a comma b such that. integral a to b the function is the product f of x time g of x dx is nothing but the because of the continuous function f of z times integral a to b g of x dx this is integral mean value zero right so first we need to verify whether this first and the second conditions are satisfying to our function f and g right okay come on what is the f but we don't know what is the f but f should be a continuous function on closed interval 1 comma 3 that is a first condition Mm, I will put some right. So first condition, f is a continuous on closed interval b, and our problem f is a continuous on closed interval one comma three. Okay, because our a is one and b is three. Right, and g is a function. From one to three to R by this is the function, right? But basically, what I need that G should be a Riemann integrable and uh, G is a non-negative function on the closed interval one comma three. But unfortunately, so the given function G of x is an increasing function. Right on one comma three. What is that one? X is less than y implies one plus. Okay, x is less than y. That implies ln of. Okay, you can take x cube. That implies x cube is less than y cube because for all x belongs to one comma three. And that implies ln x cube is less than ln y cube. That implies one plus ln x cube is less than one plus ln y cube. That implies g of x is less than or equals to g of y. So x is less than y. And g of x is less than g of y, so clearly that g is a increasing function, right? Suppose if they are not given here, so you can verify with this property like this way. So g is an increasing function, right? Very good. So come on, tell me, what about that g? Is it integrable? 
So this condition is true. What about this condition? That is a G belongs to R of AB. That is G is a Riemann integrable on AB. Come on, see, check the function. One X, X is not equal to zero. That is important. And then the ln x, the numerator is a continuous function. Denominator is a continuous function. The coefficient function, f, uh, some uh, function by continuous function by continuous function is again continuous. So if it is a continuous, every continuous function is a Riemann integrable or what we proved? We proved some two classes of functions. Forget the continuous function. What we proved? This is that implies g is integrable. Uh, g is increasing function, right? So we proved one theorem. If the function is monotonic function, that is either monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing, then the function is Riemann integrable. So g is g is increasing function. So that implies g belongs to Riemann integral. Okay, no need to say the continuous business, etc. Even here, once it is increasing function, then we can say that is clearly every increasing function or decreasing function or Riemann integral. So g belongs to R of AP. Right? So any doubt for this up to this point? Then once all conditions are satisfying, then what is the integral by Cauchy mean value theorem? Then by Cauchy, sorry, not Cauchy, by integral mean value theorem. Integral 1 to 3 f of x g of x dx is equals to f of z times integral 1 to 3 g of x dx. Right? So what is the g of x? So if it is a monotonically increasing, right? So what is the value of this one? Substitute that one. That is f of z times integral 1 to 3. Ln, uh, g of x is 1 plus ln of x cube. Right? Over x. Dx. So, we can solve this integral. But you know the technique, right? So here is x cube is there. So we try to make a linear a linearization of this integral that we are taking u is equals to, let us say, ln x. Because limits here is x is equals to 1, 2, x is equals to 3. Right? So now let us take u is equals to ln x. Then what is the derivative? du dx is equals to 1 over x. That implies x du is equals to dx. So now I can, um, what is the u? x dx uh, Mm. So, what happened? Therefore, what is the 1 plus 3 ln x over x dx? I need to shift into, this is a integrand, right? Uh, we need to convert it into with respect to u, 1 plus 3 ln x over x dx is equals to, what is this one? 1 plus 3 ln x is u. 1 plus 3u over x times x du 
because dx is equals to x du, right? So xx cancel, we get one plus three du. So now I need to replace the integrand. So what is that one? Therefore, but you have to change the limit. So when it x is equals to one, that is ln one, u is equals to zero, right? So that is, I need to change. This is x is equals to one. This is u is equals to zero. When we substitute x is equals to one, ln one, that is a zero. Two, what is the upper limit? Three. When x is equals to three, u is equals to ln three. Right? So that is in the, the integrand what? is that one one plus three u so we know that the integral of this one is equals to uh, u plus this is one that is a u plus three u mean three u square by two from the limits zero to ln three so that is that is ln3 ln3 plus 3 by 2 ln3 whole q but when you substitute 0 that is equals to a 0 so we, we we are getting only upper limit value right so this is the value of integral 1 2 3 g of x dx so then you can substitute that one Therefore, integral 1 to 3, f of x, g of x, dx is nothing but f of z times ln 3 plus 3 by 2 times ln 3. Okay. That is the solution. Right? Okay. So, it is already in your practice sheet. So you have to check that one. The second one. The next one is assignment problem, right? This is. Is it assignment? Yeah. So if people are already submitted. Right. So what is this one? Again, this is an application of the integral mean value theorem. Use integral mean value theorem to prove that if f belongs to continuous function and that integral a to b f of x dx is equals to zero, then there exists a c belongs to closed interval a comma b such that f of c is equals to zero. So, what is that one? So, how to uh, apply the integral mean value theorem? So, one is only one function. Where is the g? What is the G? So if you know the F and Z, then we can prove. Right? So what is the G? So here, the G is also same same function right why f is a continuous function every continuous function is also Riemann integral but this function is integral a to b f of x dx is equals to zero so what happened according to that one right 
what is the integral f and g right so here is the same then the what is the value the integral f and z is equals to from a to b right and then this is equals to f of c let us say times integral a to b f of x dx right Isn't it? What is this one? So, can I take the value in place of C? Can I write that one? F of C is equals to 1 over B minus A times integral A to B F of X dx. Is it possible to write this one? Yeah, possible for this one. How do we prove this one? This is f of f of c is equals to this one. Is it correct the integral uh, mean value theorem? I think there is one corollary. Right? What is the corollary? Forget all this one. Right? Forget all this one by using direct. You can Hmm. Forget to apply direct mean value theory. There is one corollary, right? We proved that one. What is the corollary? We can use that one. Of course, we can apply for that one, but it seems to be a little bit lengthy, but it is a direct step, right? So what is the corollary of integral mean value theorem? If f is a continuous function, f belongs to C of a comma b, that is a continuous function, then there exists a xi belongs to a comma b such that right right continuous and there exists a j belongs to a b such that f of z is equals to 1 over b minus a times integral a to b f of x dx this one is obtained just to take g of x is equals to 1 in previous uh, integral mean value theorem actually this is a corollary right isn't it so, I am applying here f of xi, 
So if you're using g of x, this is the theorem, right? So in place of j, I am taking the f of c is equals to 1 over b minus a, right? Times integral a to b, f of x dx. But the given condition, this is equals to 0. So 1 minus b minus a times 0 is equals to 0, right? So that is f of c is equals to c. Simple one. Right? Okay. So what is the b? b is also very simple. But here we are going to take two functions, right? So what I am going to here, the, using the statement A, prove that if the two functions are a members of C of A, B, such that these two are equal, then there exists a C belongs to A, B, such that these two values are equal, right? So with help of the A, these two are functions A, B, such that those two integral values are equal, Immediately, we can find one C belongs to AB such that those two values are equal at X is equals to C, right? So, let us take the H is equals to F1 minus F2, right? What is the F1? F1 is a continuous function. F1 belongs to C of A comma B and f2 is also c of a b then the difference is also continuous function right so the difference is also continuous function then h is also uh, continuous function on closed interval a comma b right so now i am going to every continuous function is a Riemann integrable so that's why integral a to b h of x dx is equals to integral a to b f1 of x dx minus integral a to b f2 of x dx. But in hypothesis, these two values are equal, that is equals to 0. So once integral a to b h of x dx is equals to 0 and h is a continuous function, then I am going to apply the part a. So then there exists a C belongs to A comma B such that H of C is equals to C. So what is the H of C? That is F1 of C minus F2 of C is equals to 0. So that implies F1 of C is equals to F2 of C. That is the way. Right? Any doubts? Right. Now, next one. The 11th A. There are A, B, C. I gave this A as a part of assignment. The remaining two are the practice sheet. Right? Come on. The first one, f of x is a f is a continuous function that is a periodic of period alpha. What is that meaning? Periodic function mean? f of x plus alpha is equals to f of x. That is, we know that the sine function, cos function, all periodic functions. So, here is a continuous function, my f, and it is a periodic function of period alpha. That is, f of x plus alpha is equals to f of x. Okay. Very good. Then, what we are going to prove? If we define capital F of x is equals to 0 to x, right? Isn't it? 
0 to x f of t dt. This function is also periodic of period alpha if and only if the integral 0 to alpha f of t dt is equals to 0. Right? So, when f of x is a periodic function of period alpha, this condition is true. If this condition is a true, then your function f of x plus alpha is equals to f of x. So, totally, what we are going to prove, we need to calculate first f of x plus, of course, alpha or a. If I am saying alpha, it is alpha. If it is a, it is a. No problem. Right? Okay. We can say a in place of alpha. No problem. Okay. Let us take f of x plus a minus f of x. First, I need to calculate these values. That is, by definition of capital F of, here is a x. On the right hand side, the integral upper bound is x. So, my F of x plus alpha is a 0 to x plus a, right, f of t dt minus integral 0 to x f of t dt. See, this is an interval. This is a 0, this is a x, this is x plus a, right? So, a is somewhere here, right? But A is some real number periodic function. It is a part of a period of that function. Right? So now what I am going to, the integral G, 0 to x plus A, I am going to dividing two parts, this one. Because 0 to x plus A. So I need to divide this one into two parts. So somewhere here is there some let us say a so i will split this first one is 0 to a because we know that r 0 to alpha f of t is equals to 0 so that's why i am going to split this one into two parts again either a or alpha right um 0 to a f of t dt plus Remaining part, a to x plus a, f of t dt, minus integral 0 to x, f of t dt. Any doubt? Right. So, this is what I got. Now, I am going to simplify what is the x plus integral a to x plus right? Integral a to x plus a f of t dt value, right? Since integral 0 to, sorry, a to x plus a f of t dt is equals to, right? So, now what I am going to do here, see, change of variable, right? So, let u is equals to t minus a, right? Um, we know that, we know that f of a plus u is equals to f of u because f is a periodic function of period a or alpha, whatever we are consider that one, right? So, that's why I am using this variable. I need to change this one. If I am taking u is equals to t minus a, that implies um, t is equals to u plus a. So now here, what happened? Integral f of. So this is 
So what is the derivative? If I am taking u is equals to um, dt, right? So this is t is equals to t minus a, then t is equals to u plus a, then what is the du? du is equals to what happened? dt, right? So uh, in place of t, I am putting u plus a, that is f of u plus a times d of, right, u plus a, right, u plus a. So what is the limits? Limits. Here is, here is t is equals to a to t is equals to x minus a. When I am putting t is equals to a, your u is equals to 0. And t is equals to, when I putting uh, x, x plus a, then you will get x. So change of limits, when we are changing change of the variables, also limits will be changed. So what is this one? This is equals to integral 0 to x, f of u plus a, that is f of u, because f is a periodic function, and d of u plus a, the derivative, that is again t. So what happened, integral a to x plus a is equals to integral 0 to x f of u du. So u is a dummy variable. You can replace any one, right? So u is a dummy variable. We can replace any one. You can put y or t or x, whatever it may be. So that integral is not depending upon this variable. So then I can consider that one as 0 to x again f of t. t. So what I took this part, is equals to integral 0 to x f of t dt. So now what I am using this information in this equation star. So therefore f of x plus a minus f of x equals to integral 0 to a f of t dt plus I replace a to x plus a by 0 to x f of t dt minus integral 0 to x f of t dt. So what is the output? Integral 0 to a f of t is to our class. Right, so the difference of this is equals to integral zero to f of t dt. Right, so now this is therefore what is that one? What I am going to prove if f of x is equals to this one is a periodic of period alpha that is f of x plus a minus f of x. Right, so this means. When it is f of x plus a is equals to f of x, when it will happen, f of x plus a is equals to f of x. When it is, this becomes 0. This becomes 0. Right? So if this becomes a 0, then this is equals to 0. Then f of x plus a is equals to f of x. And hence, f is a periodic. Right? So the condition is, therefore, that implies f of x plus a minus f of x is periodic, periodic of period a or alpha if and only if the integral 0 to a f of t dt is equals to 0. Right? So because of this equality, it is a 0 then you will get f of x plus a minus f of If these two are equal, then your integral is equals to 0. So that's why this is the result. Any doubt? Right. If there is no doubt, I can move further. The B1. The one is 
nothing but a part of the first fundamental theorem of calculus. What is the first fundamental theorem of calculus? You can check the page number uh, 39, right? What is the first fundamental theorem? What is that one? Suppose f is a function from R is continuous, right? And two, and define f from a comma b to R by f of x is equals to integral a to x f of t dt. Right, then what we proved? We proved a f is uniformly continuous and continuous on closed interval a comma b and b f is differentiable. on open interval a comma b and c f dash of x is equals to f of x for all x belongs to a comma b. This is the first fundamental theorem of calculus. So the part one, right? If f is a Riemann integrable, prove that f of x integral 0 to x f of t dt is a continuous. So here is using that information, using that uh, prove what we proved, f is a uniformly continuous, then it is obviously it is a continuous. First part you can extract from this one. Here keep in your mind. Here is f is a Riemann integrable on a b, right? And f of x dx dt is equals to continuous, right? So use that one because we know that every continuous function is uh, Riemann integrable, but Riemann integrable is need not be a continuous function. Right, or you can use any other technique. So, what is the, what is the next one? It satisfies Lipschitz condition. What is the Lipschitz condition? That is, F satisfies Lipschitz condition. Lipschitz condition means T satisfies Lipschitz condition means there exists a constant k greater than zero such that the g of x minus g of y is less than or equals to k times mod x minus y. So, I will check what is this one. Right. So, generally, F is a Riemann integrable mean F is a bounded. So f belongs to Riemann integrable. We know that only we are consider the Riemann integrables as a bounded function. So f is a bounded. As f is bounded, then there exists a minimum and supremum. So that is f of x values lies in between m and capital F. And closed interval for all x belongs to a comma. So there is a minimum and there is a maximum, right? So now what I am going to consider, let capital M not, you can take any other one, that is a maximum of, but we don't know what is the small m and capital M, either positive or negative. We don't know what is the function f of x. So I, I am going to take M not is the maximum of mod M comma mod capital M. 
So that implies you can consider that one that mod M is less than or equals to capital M naught. Mod M is less than or equals to capital M. Isn't it? So then what happened? If you are taking that one, then what about the mod, mod of f of x is less than or equals to capital M naught. Right? That is your modulus of f of x is less than or equals to M naught. What I am going to prove? I am going to prove that capital F is a, a Lipschitz function. Once that is F satisfies Lipschitz condition. Lipschitz function means F satisfies Lipschitz condition. Once it is a Lipschitz continuous, that is a uniformly continuous. Indirectly, we can prove that one. Right? <clears throat> so now we are going to prove this condition, this, this one. We need to find what is the k. So now modulus of f of x minus f of y is equals to integral 0 to x because it is x, upper limit is x minus integral 0 to y f of t, t, t. Right? So here see, let us say x is less than y, for example, for sake of this is a 0, this is a x, this is a y. Integral 0 to x and integral 0 to y, If you, when, when we subtracting integral 0 to y to integral 0 to x, you will get integral x to y. Okay, no problem. If you, you, you can take here y and x. So that's why I am taking the modulus. So this is less than or equals to modulus of integral x to y f of t t t. But we know that integral properties of the integrals, this is less than or equals to integral mod f of t d t. But this is less than or equals to x to y. We know that. What is the f of t? This is m naught, m naught times integral x to y dt that is m naught times y minus x of course that is less than or equals to m times mod y minus x see modulus of f of x minus f of y is less than or equals to m naught times y minus not x naught x so this is fulfill the condition of the Lipschitz so your capital F Therefore, is Lipschitz. So, F is a Lipschitz. So, what is the Lipschitz constant? K. Here, K is your M naught. Right? So, F is Lipschitz continuous and Lipschitz constant K is equal to yeah. So once if is a Lipschitz continuous, then that is a uniformly continuous. You can take here, this is a, a delta. Uh, when we are taking this one is a, a delta and the delta is equals to epsilon by M naught. This is less than epsilon by M. That is a, a M naught. So M naught, M naught will be cancelled. You get so less than epsilon. So that is a Lipschitz Continuous is always uniformly continuous and hence it is a continuous, right? So, if once if you prove this one, then F is uh, automatically your capital F is continuous, right? So, any doubt? The same, the C part is also same. So, again, you have to use the... Uh, style of the first part of the fundamental theorem of integral calculus. But keep in mind, here is f is a Riemann integrable and it is a continuous attack. So not belongs to a comma b, right? So you can see this is. So if these two, if these are happened, then these are the hold for the fundamental. So proof is already in your material. You have to 
check how to use that information. Right? So now I will explain what is the C part. Yeah. If f has a jump discontinuity at uh, x and r, then f is not differentiable at x and r. So we know that in the first fundamental theorem of calculus, what we proved, f dash, you can see here, here, f dash of x is equal to f of x and r. So we proved that one, this is f dash, according to the fundamental theorem of fundamental theorem of integral calculus first part first fundamental right f dash of x naught you can check that one what i proved in class limit x tends to x naught f of x minus f of x naught over x minus x naught right that is equals to limit x tends to x naught, right? Integral x naught to x, f of t dt, I can write that one. That is equals to what we proved, that is equals to f of x naught, right? So this is what we proved in the uh, first fundamental theorem of integral. So I can write this one in the form of h tends to 0, that is f dash of r, f dash of x naught is equals to limit h tends to 0. I can change uh, x by x naught plus h, f of x naught plus h minus f of x naught over h, that is equals to, I think I missed here. 1 over x minus x naught, right? Limit h tends to 0, 1 over h, that is x minus x naught is h, times integral x naught to x uh, f of t dt, that is equals to f of x naught, right? What is this guy is asking if f is a jump discontinuity? Jump discontinuity mean? left hand and right hand derivatives of the function at x naught exist but they are not equal that is called the jump to discontinuity what happened this limit is exist this is right so what is the let you can say the left hand derivative f dash of x naught is equals to limit h tends to 0 minus, right, f of x naught plus h minus f of x naught over h, right, I can say that is limit h tends to 0 minus 1 over h, here is integral x naught to x f of t of course, you have to change integrals also here, x naught to x naught plus h, right? x naught to x naught plus h. When we are taking h is equals to x minus x naught, automatically the limits also change, right? So this is f of t dt. So this is equals to, generally, we can say that is f of x. So we can say that one as L1. And similarly, the right derivative of x naught is equals to same thing, that is a limit, h tends to 0 plus 1 over h integral x naught to x naught plus h f of t dt is equals to L2, let us say. So what, what is this guy's uh, assumption? f has a jump discontinuity. So the limits are exist. The limits are exist, right hand limit and left hand limit. Jump mean f has jump discontinuity. So if and only if the L1 is not equal to L2. If L1 is not equal to L2, what will happen? 
the right here, this limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. So when it is does not exist, your F, capital F is not differentiable at the point X naught. So that is, once it is, so when this L1, so L1 is not L2, then the F is not differentiable at X naught. Finish. Right. So now, any doubt? I think we should be good there, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, in uh, force work one, so I don't know how many theorems are in differentiation. So, in the question one, there is AB are possibly based on the teacher small. There is also C. One minute. I need to. Okay. Right. Hello? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Okay, right. I need to... Okay, I will. Yeah. What I am going to... The expecting uh, course work one pattern. There are two questions. Right? Are three questions answer any two? Right? I will give choice. So answer any two. That is only 55 minutes each question. One A, B. Right? So one theorem and uh, application and some related. What is the theorems? So focus the named theorems so far, the majority. There are so many named theorems like Darbox criterion, Tyler's theorem, Cauchy mean value theorem in differentiation, uh, Rolle's theorem, right? First mean value theorem. So there are a lot of main theorem, named theorems are there, right? In both integration, of course, differentiation is a lot and uh, integration is a less. And also focus on the exercise problem, but practice sheet problems, models based on the practice sheet. And focus the theorems, right? So you can expect 50% theorems and 50% in applications, right? So that is the model. Come on, tell me if you have any doubt. And the exam coursework one pattern. Hello? Uh, no, I think that sounds straightforward, you know. Okay. Right. Okay. Hmm. Where it is. Still, it is a screen display. Uh, yeah, we see in the, the PowerPoint right now. Oh, but I don't know. I need to stop. Okay. So, if there is no question, I will go to close this meeting. Okay? Sir, um, quick question. The, 
You say you say three questions optional. One is on differentiation, one is on integration. Or maybe maybe one integration. And the third one would be a mixture or no, each question is a mixture. Each question is a mixture. Okay. Yeah. Differentiation, integration, differentiation, integration. Select two questions. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any doubt? Right. So if there is no questions, then I am going to close. Hello? No, uh, not on my no, answer. No Where it is? I am unable to close this meeting. I don't know. Still it, ah, yes, got it.